people always think that, okay, so intermittent fasting or timeless eating is eating within X number of hours. But there is another component to it that, that, that breakfast or when you are breaking that fast or the fast meal should also happen at a consistent time. Say if somebody is some days in the week having starting their morning um, by breaking their fast at 11 a.m. because they're at work and that's when they're yeah. first getting hungry. And then it gets to the weekend and they're like, actually, you know, I've had a lion. I'm going to have my my lunch or breaking my fast, my breakfast at 1, one thirty. What does that actually do in the long term? The reason why this person is waking up late in the weekend is because he or she was not sleeping enough during the weekday. So then the question is, uh, what is more important to catch up on lost sleep or to set an alarm, wake up and have your breakfast? <laughs> so <laughs> this, is a, this is a very personal question because if that person is so tired, so sleep deprived that that catch up sleep is very important, then mm. maybe that's what that person should do. Mm-hmm. But what we have found is for most people, um, 10 hours is kind of the sweet spot because mm-hmm. of course there are some people who are headstrong, they can actually eat one meal a day and can feel healthy and happy. But for mere mortals like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause you're 8 a.m. aren't you? you? You break your fast at 8 a.m. Am I right? Yes. And, yes. Do you, and, and when do you finish eating? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. So that's 10 hours. Okay. So you're yeah, 10, 10 hours. hours. So you're, 10 like, hours. you're on the optimum. Okay. Yeah. What is more important is lifestyle is what, when, and how much we eat, sleep, and move every single day. It's not what we do for one or two months to lose weight or feel better and then go back to our bad habit, but which habit we can actually stick to long term. Mm -hmm. And for most people who are living in a family or with somebody else, significant other, eating within four to six hours is very difficult for both of them. 10 hours at least gives you some window so that the family or you can you can share a meal with your significant other. Which also is a huge health benefit, you know, yeah. that communal setting, the social yes. human connection, it's a massive part of, you know, yeah. I know long, longevity and centarians is kind of a buzzword right now, but it is, it's yeah. definitely part of that lifestyle and that community is, is human connection. Yeah, it's something that people can follow. So for example, between 10 and 10 year old and 100 year old, everybody can try to eat within 12 hours. So it's not actually easy. It's not that easy because what we find is less than 10% of people can consistently, this is very important, consistently eat within 12 hours. Why does this work? What is it doing to our bodies when we are fasting for a longer period of time? Yeah, so we uh, systematically looked at this recently. That paper came out in 2023, January. Um, of course, these are the experiments we can do in mice. Uh, mm-hmm. We asked, well, the benefits have to be beyond our digestive system or liver. So we looked at 22 different organs and brain regions, including kidney, heart, different parts of the digestive system. And we looked at all 20,000 plus genes, when they turn on, when they turn off, whether, what time, how high they turn on, how low they turn off, every single aspect. So it was a massive, wow. <laughs> several millions of data points. And then when we condense that, at least in mice, when mice fast and then eat, then during this eating time, few things happen. Those are very important for our well-being. One is various enzymes that are involved in repairing our DNA because every single day we damage our DNA, we're exposed to sun. Almost all of our food has some, I won't say toxin, but xenobiotics, for example, Mm -hmm. food flavoring agent, food coloring agent, um, many things in our food. So these things, they cause damage and the DNA has to be repaired. And those repair enzymes, they go to a very high level. If the mice had fasted and then ate, if there was no fasting, then these genes don't turn on that much. So what we find is this eating followed by 
overnight fasting, uh, several hours of fasting, actually turn on these quality control mechanisms in every cell so that our cells are healthier by repairing DNA, by doing better quality control of enzymes, RNAs, uh, all these things happen during this feeding or eating phase. We also make some of the beneficial fat because when you think about fat, we think that all fats are bad, but actually all of our cells are wrapped around by a layer of fat. And that layer of fat has to be good quality of fat. And we always think that the fat that we eat is ends up in our cells, which is to some extent true, but we also make a good chunk of fat throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, we take that fat that we have eaten and we process it, make it better fat, or simply we also build fat from building fat. And that fat making process also improves if we have gone through some fasting followed by eating. The paper was published only a couple of months ago. So um, again, in mice, and we had seen some evidence of it in a human study where we had done biopsy, fat biopsy from people who went through very short term for a couple of weeks of um, eight hours of eating and 16 hours of fasting. So some of it actually translates pretty well to humans. And so what did that show from that biopsy from the human trial? So we see a very similar trend that, yes, our, uh, of course, that was done only from fat cell, whereas this mm. mouse study is done on 22 different um, tissues. So we see more broad picture. It's not only uh, fat, but, for example, our kidney, our gut, our liver, all of these, they, every day we are making new cells, repairing new cells and making new cells and for that we also need this fat layer we also need uh, some good fats so those things after a long period of fasting several hours of fasting so it's got a real a variety of benefits from just yeah. actually how our systems clean up how it repairs dna but also how fats metabolized more efficiently so this just makes me think you know the long-term benefits is just a huge reduction in chronic disease yes that's what we also see there are many mouse studies now uh, showing that this uh, type of time restricted feeding or time restricted eating in mice actually reduces the chance of uh, cancer. And also, if you even put a tumor inside a mouse, then that tumor doesn't grow well, it doesn't grow rapidly if the mouse is going through this time restricted feeding or intermittent fasting. So, there are two, two benefits. One, there is less incidence of cancer, less chance that cancer cells will start to grow. And second, even if they start, they cannot grow that fast. So you're basically starving the cancer cell. My visual analogy of this is yeah, just yeah, thinking, yeah. If, it's, if it's not growing, you're not feeding. You're not feeding, you're not, you're not creating an environment that's good for cancer cells. Thanks so much for listening. To hear the full episode, there's a link in the description.